Hello friends, this is Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. I have another marketplace video to share with you today. There are journals from two different artists. So let's get right into it. If you're new and you don't know what the marketplace is, it is a online consignment shop where you can send me your journals and you'll get a commission. I'll sell them for you. I photograph, I video, I list, I ship, all that. You don't have to worry about anything except making the journals and sending them to me. So if you have any questions about that, message me on Facebook or Etsy. And then when I get them in, I number them um, and then I can film them in order that I receive them. So this is number 34. I didn't start um, numbering them till later on in the process, but in the next box is number 35. So this is from Frances Serpa. She sold a couple journals with me before. They're always wonderful works of art. So I'm excited to see what she sent this time. Looks like it is a patriotic journal. Oh, she sent me a little envelope of goodies here. I love the goodies you guys send me. It's never necessary to send me anything. But look at these little die cuts and envelopes. It's just so sweet that you do think of me when you do. And I love using what you guys send me. So all of these will be used in my journals and go in my stash. And then she wrote me a little note, which might have something important about the journal. So I'm going to open it. She always... Okay, so this is called Patches and pockets. She had originally thought that this journal could be for a Father's Day gift or for our brothers who needed a place to call their own or for children and car trips. You can put some crayons into this pocket and go for hours of fun and you can change out the pages because it's ring bound. So she has just to protect the rings, which is really smart. And I will probably put this, well, back in for shipping because that does protect the rings. But yeah, you can take pages out and replace pages or add pages um, if you want to. You can use it as a baby book, a photo book, a family reunion book, which would be great because there's a lot of family reunions in the summertime in July and July 4th. Or a shabby chic country wedding guest book. So it's been sitting on her dresser for a month and she decided it was time to share it with the world. This is called Patches and Pockets, and it's the only one she sent. So look at how, it looks like she did repurpose jeans, and how brilliant is that? There's an adorable patchwork little tag in there. Look at how pretty and perfect. I've seen a lot of ring-bound journal, well, not a lot, but I've seen some ring-bound journals, and this one is by far the most perfect Ringbound journals are hard to get perfect. I've made uh, some inserts for ringbound journals myself, and they tend to get a little bit on the um, sloppy side. So hers, she's always so careful. Oh, that was just the one. Okay. <clears throat> Get that out of the way and start the flip through. Oh, that's right. There's a trick she taught me with these, uh, there we go, rings to have the widest part down at the bottom so it opens flat. So this is just a real cute primitive um, Americana and like I like the road trip idea because if you're visiting the states and doing a road trip I'm just flipping through quickly here these are just all sorts of blank pages it would be so much fun to have this to play tic-tac-toe games um, draw pictures, you can, you know, rip them out, replace the paper, um, you know, pass it around throughout the car. And you would have this wonderful book full of memories from a trip. Write down license plate numbers, all sorts of things like that. See, that's kind of like car trip-esque. Of course, I also think it would be wonderful just for daily to-do lists, for menus and shopping lists, because when you do a shopping list, you can do your shopping list and then you could just go ahead and rip that page out and take it to the store with you and not worry about ruining the binding. You can just replace it with extra paper if necessary. Little booklets, you could put recipes or 
whatever you want. Family reunions, you could, you know, tell family stories, write down family stories, use it as a guest book, you know, family tree. So many different things you could do with this. And there are tons of pages. There's some little photo corners, so you could include some photos. So many papers. My favorite idea is still that road trip idea. I think if you had like a two or three week vacation, you could actually fill most of this because you know how many games and stories and you could even get atlases and children's activity books and old magazines and have your kids like clip them out and glue them in while they're riding in the car. So here's just little pieces of fabric and little die cuts that all coordinate and you can use throughout this journal. Look at the stitching on the pockets, how she's reinforced these. There's a tag. So cute. So this is patches and pockets. Whenever you we get a journal from Francis, it's a treat and it will probably be a few months before we get another one. So um, you definitely want to snatch it up if you like it at all because it will be gone and then she doesn't send several journals like some of the artists do when you get one it's a treasure like a one of a kind that not that the other ones aren't I'm just saying you don't have as many opportunities to get one so that's patches and pockets and that's what she sent so now I have a box from Jane, Jane Dilly from Indiana. And um, there's a box of journals, so I'm not really sure what all is in here, but I am excited to see. So here is a traveler's notebook. It's fabric covered and it has this really pretty landscape and then this pretty butterfly ribbon. So I think this would be great, let's see. Fabric covered, yep. It's a file folder that she covered with fabric and then it's lined with a cardstock 40 pages. To me, this would be perfect in your traveler's notebook cover for a summer vacation or something like that. Of course, you can truly use them for anything. But it's just a basic traveler's notebook with little touches, coffee dyed papers, little um, tags, little envelopes. It's just one of those ones that you could easily make your own. I really like working in a traveler's notebook it doesn't take very long to fill up because of how narrow the pages are so you feel like you've accomplished a lot and filled one up when I try to fill up a full-size junk journal it takes so much longer when I fill up a traveler's notebook size I can get it done within a, within a couple months or less and I get to move on to a new journal and it's just fun and new inspiration so definitely and you could always, um, this is not attached, this adorable ribbon. If you're putting this in a cover, you could just take this ribbon, put it in your stash, and use it for a, like a spring project or another project. Let's see what else she has included in this box. So this is a bigger journal. I don't know. Oh, look at this. This is cute. So this is a time journal. It has these really pretty, I don't know if they're, they're like embellishments, maybe with a sticker on the front, I'm not sure. Um, it is a flexible hardcover, so it's not super sturdy, but what's nice about that is you can fill this up and flex it up, and this spine and these covers will flex open to make this super chunky. So there's that extra room between the signatures so you can really bulk it up. Even though it, it's a little bit flexible, that works really well when you're trying to bulk it up. And as you can see, these are sewn in there well. Um, I have made that kind of a new requirement for the journals in the marketplace when you send them to me, make sure they're sewn in really tight, and these are. Um, so you can just bulk it up. Sometimes when you have those really hard spines, they're wonderful for writing in, but if you add much else, it just really, it doesn't have any room to expand. So this is perfect for expanding and adding a ton of ephemera. You could really turn this steampunk um, or just keep it softer. So there's a brown Rick Rack trim. It's called the Time Journal. She's used recycled cardboard and then fabric covered it with three signatures. 
and it is just this vintage, um, kind of a basic vintage with a little bit of a time theme. So you could turn this lovely ladies if you wanted to put vintage women, if you wanted to put vintage, there's a key, like if you wanted to, you could have it go in any direction. You could really steampunk it and make it more masculine. You know, someone commented on one of the junk journal groups recently, and I could tell they were they were new to junk journals and they were curious and they were wondering why we, there's no, oh, it looks like it's an old postcard that she has done this mixed media painting over, which is really cool, um, which is really great if you don't like the picture on the postcard, totally make it your own. Um, so they were, she was wondering why there's a couple of themes that are repeated over and over and over again. And she was wondering, you know, do those sell better? Um, why do I keep seeing the same, like, couple things, Victorian and, you know, and I, I got a couple things out of that. Once, one, we like a lot of the same type of things. We, there's things that make us happy, nature and, and vintage and old, and we love all that stuff. So we tend to make a lot of that and do a lot of that because we like it, shabby chic, stuff like that. Um, the second thing that that question made me think about is expanding our base. And especially as the graphic designers, like I create kits and I'm putting it out there for you guys, as well as so many other people like Paulette from TLC Creates Vintage, she pushes the envelope. Oh my goodness, if you want new ideas, you need to go to her shop. This is not sponsored by her or anything. I just love Paulette. Um, she's always coming up with new things. And I think she just finished like a Covered Bridges one, which is so pretty. And you don't see a lot of that. So I think as digital designers, we need to push the envelope. We're almost like the fashion designers of our, you know, our hobby. And um, if we provide kits in other themes that people like... On the other hand, you push it too much, people don't buy it, or if it's something they don't like. So it's, it's a balance between all that. The other thing that it made me think of is um, that, you know, as the, the journal makers, we need to let people know what we want. And I like that over on my site. You guys can always give me ideas, and your ideas spark my creativity. So one of you mentioned that you wanted a kit that was just mushrooms. And she said, I love mushrooms, but the problem is that um, most of the kits have a couple mushrooms, but they have a whole bunch of other nature things, and I just want a mushroom kit. I thought, huh, well, there is a niche that needs to be filled. So I made Forest Gems, which is a total mushroom kit, and you can get that in my shop. And then that same person said, I really want a glittery fairy kit based on the works of Warwick Gobble. And I'm like, okay, I need to look this up. And I was like, I can definitely do this. So I'm doing a junk journal experience with her on that kit right now. And I've been writing down ideas that you guys give me. So fill the comments with ideas too, because somebody else came up with an idea for bicycles. And I think I'm going to do that one next. So yeah, a lot of words. Sorry about that. But Oh, this is really pretty. So here's another traveler's notebook with a butterfly applique. Look at how pretty this cardstock is and how well it goes with the butterfly. There's stitching, just a purple ribbon that you can take off. So if you're putting this in a, in a um, cover, you can just reuse the ribbon on another project. So this one is scrapbook covered file folder again. Really pretty soft butterflies. I think butterflies is another one we make over and over and over again. And I think... I think there's just some things that are universal. And I talked about that in my last video, or last Marketplace video, about the universality of nature. And we're never going to get tired of some things. Like, we're not going to tire of butterflies and dragonflies. How can you tire of this beautifulness? I remember, as a little girl, my mom bought me a coloring book from Dover Publications. And it was one of those more adult coloring books so it was really detailed but it was butterflies and then in the back they had all of the true to color images so you could color the butterflies the way they were supposed to be and i just think the beauty in nature and the variety in nature we'll never get tired of seeing another butterfly kit because there's always more beauty to pull out of it and that i truly believe that's because god is the greatest artist and when he designed these he gave us these color palettes and these beautiful things to work off of. You guys weren't expecting me to be so chattery today, huh? You're like, just flip through the videos. You know, you can turn off the sound if I talk too much. So here's another really pretty one. Look at these fabric flowers. 
these pearl, these flat back pearls, roses, they have got to be universal as well. Never get tired of roses. Some of these are my ephemera pieces. I think that's from Dear to My Heart. Okay, there's cardstock and so many pretty things. She's making her books perfect for, um, yeah, the pages are done enough so that if you just wanted to write, you could. But if you wanted to add more, I mean, you have whole pages that you can design. And you can take these things like, you might not need three tags in one pocket. So, you know, you can take this one here and you can glue it here to make a tuck spot. Tuck this tag in over here, clip that up there and slip a photo in there. So they are so um, modular. So pretty. And like, you don't have to use everything in a journal. So when you, when you pull these out of the back and you say, okay, I'm gonna write my name and address on this tag and keep it in the back. And then you're saying, I'm just happy, that's how I wanna leave it. And you're like, but I have this image and I don't know what to do with it. Put it in your stash. And you can use it as a cover on another journal or a journal card on another journal. You gotta see this bead in detail because it has like silver and roses in it. It's really pretty. All right, that one does not have a closure. Okay, let me see. Okay. Oh, how pretty. More butterflies. Look at the charms. This fabric is so pretty. It's butterflies and gold. Look at this ribbon, shimmery. That is just so pretty. Fabric covered, cardboard cover. I really like this one. And look at the embossed shimmery butterflies. Ugh. Little booklet, little fairy. There's more embossed paper, but that's actually a pocket with some goodies in it. More emboss. Oh, that is a neat idea embossing index cards. If you guys keep a notebook, add that. I've never thought of that embossing index cards. So pretty. Butterfly journals always seem to sell. I love that one. It's one of the ones I'd consider buying because it is definitely the type of journal I would use. But I'm just finishing my journal that Debbie um, made me. And I think I'm going to be starting a journal that Ellie made me a while ago when we did a swap. But it's a perfect timing to start it. It's a lemon journal. And lemons are big this year. So it's perfect. All right, so here is another one. Oh, it's bird themed. So it's fabric. Really pretty beads tied on here at the bottom. Just simple white ribbon closure. Two signatures. It's a flexible, like soft cover that has two signatures sewn in. So pretty. There's the embossed index cards again. Index cards are so cheap. You can go to the dollar store or Walmart and get them for a dollar or less for a packet. And you can make so many things with them. Sometimes you can get them in colors too. Right, look at that. So pretty. Looks like there's some Tim Holtz card stock. Sometimes the pages. There we go. So pretty little booklet. Oh, wow, there's an embossed bird one. That's gorgeous. I have embossing folders. I just need to take the time to emboss stuff. 
and it doesn't even take that much time. Really pretty. There's a lot of pages in here, a lot of room. So pretty. See, that would be pretty like as a banner somewhere. That's pretty. It's an embossed envelope, which is a wonderful idea as well. And that's another embossed envelope. And then there is a coin envelope back here. It has some bits and bobs and pieces in it that you can use in your journal. Here's that one. So pretty. Just a simple white ribbon. Gives it a really subtle, sweet statement. Let's see. Oh, she sent me a little. She said, just a small thank you, Lindsay. P.S. Hope my journals meet your standards. Absolutely they do. There's a little fairy clip. Thank you so much for all you do. Oh, wow. Really pretty cards. So she made that card. Some envelope. Oh, she made these. She like matted. That is so nice. You know, you could turn these into little card journals too. That's a wonderful idea is just taking some of that really pretty card stock and matting it on a blank card. Thank you for sending me these. I really love them and I will use them for sure. can always use cards, whether I put them in my journals or I actually use them as cards. All right, so that's today's video. They're in the marketplace section of my shop. Just click the link below. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching.